our body, our nervous system is constantly adapting to our life experiences. And then that's just it. When life experiences are overwhelming, doesn't matter why, it doesn't matter what caused the overwhelm. There's only one trauma response in the body. And so you can simplify the trauma to, did your body have a response of overwhelm? And that's it. Hello, my friend, and welcome to another episode of I Love Being Sober, sponsored by Camelback Recovery, Arizona's preferred mental health and addiction treatment option to help newcomers on their path to recovery. If that's you or someone you know, then you're in the right place because my name is Tim Westbrook, and I'm the CEO and founder of Camelback Recovery here in the always sunny and always sober Phoenix, Arizona where my team and I over the course of many years have helped thousands of people to stop their suffering and continue on their path to recovery. Today, I'm here with Dr. Amy Apogean, MD, MS, MPH. We'll get to that. She's the leading medical expert on how life experiences get stored in the body and restoring the body to its best state of healing of health through her signature model and methodology, the biology of trauma. She is a double board certified medical physician in preventative medicine and addiction medicine. She has a master's in biochemistry and a master's in public health. In addition to her medical training, she is also a certified functional medicine physician and has training and certifications specifically in neuro autoimmunity, nutrition and genetics for addictions, mental health and mood and behavioral disorders. She has several certifications in various trauma therapies, including the instinctual trauma response model, which is an art therapy, somatic experiencing developed by Dr. Peter Levine, and neuroaffective touch. Dr. Amy brings you the biology of trauma, a new lens and a methodology that courageously both adds to and bridges trauma work and medicine by reverse engineering the chronic effects of trauma on the nervous system and body on a cellular level. She also offers science-based solutions on how to rewire the nervous system with the biology of trauma, accelerating the healing journey through recovery to resilience, presence, and aliveness. I'm really looking forward to this conversation today with Dr. Amy. Dr. Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tam. It's really good to be here. It's good to see you, and it's good to be here. Yes, it's 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 great to see you. And the last we met, we met through a mutual friend, Joe Polish, and he connected us. We had breakfast at the sanctuary and it was not 120 degrees at that time. It was actually really nice. It was a wonderful time. morning. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning and it's a beautiful morning this morning as well, but it's like 120. So, so I make sure that I get my cold plunges in to, to okay. cool down for That's the day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about the biology of trauma, and I'm really looking forward to this because trauma, many people think trauma is at the root of all addiction and, and a lot of mental health. So first to start, okay, MD, MS, MPH. What does all that mean? <laughs> it means a lot of the, I know the MD, 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 okay, so you, you, I'll, I'll let you explain your certifications. Are yeah, that's left? a lot of years in school. That's what that means. Right? Like <laughs> yeah. Every letter represents so many more years in school. Okay. While you all were out having fun, I was I was in books. So MD, right? Like I have a medical degree. Right. And so mm -hmm. I went to medical school at Loma Linda University. Mm -hmm. I actually also got a master's in biochemistry. So that's the MS, the mm -hmm. master's in biochemistry. I actually finished that before I finished medical school. I did them both at the same, same time there at Loma Linda University. Okay. And then after that, when I started my general surgery residency, I actually started my master's in public health. Okay. And so that is the MPH. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's a lot of school. And you must have enjoyed it. I mean, you're saying while we were all out having fun, you must have enjoyed it. I mean, that's the only reason why I would imagine that somebody would go to school for that long. I loved it. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're trying to feel sorry for yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. 
what gives you the right to claim you are an expert on the biology of trauma? I, yeah, that's a great question. And the, my experiences. So I would start with when I was in medical school, I became a foster parent. And Tim, like, I thought that I, I thought that I knew about like what a foster child would need. And so when I had months of a few months space before I jumped back into med- medical school rotations after my master's in biochemistry, and I, and I decided to fill that space with becoming a foster parent, like I just, I, I didn't even really second guess it. Like I just, I just knew, right? Like I knew that they needed love. I knew, knew that they needed stability and I knew that I could provide that. And so when Miguel came into my life, he was four years old at the time. He is really the one that completely showed me that I I didn't know. I didn't know. I did not know. Oh my goodness. Did I not know? And one of the first things that really struck me was realizing that what I thought would be helpful to him, which was my love was actually what was triggering him. Mm. And I didn't know what to do because how can I not love him? But yet my love is actually what is causing him to feel so scared and have these big rages and get triggered. Oh. And at, at four, I could already see him heading down this path of a very hard life that would include substance use. This was just all of his behaviors and actions, even at age four. So I knew that the clock was ticking and I knew that I've got to, I've got to do something because the more that this continues, like this is just seeming to become more and more of who he is. And, and that pattern gets embedded into our system. So that's when I really started throwing myself into trying to understand like what was going on in Miguel's head. I didn't even know that biology and trauma and the body stuff yet at all. So I was just trying to approach it from a psychology standpoint still and missing the boat. And so it took me six long years, ooh, six long years to finally find the pieces that he needed. Now, the pieces that he needed were different than the pieces that I ended up needing. And it was shortly after that, that I actually experienced a severe health crash. I went into severe fatigue, couldn't get out of bed for a little while, had to take a medical leave from residency. And then we discovered different labs and my body just kind of had shut down. And I realized from all of my studies now, of course, that all of the symptoms and conditions that I was experiencing were related to what we call adverse childhood events or, or those ACE events. Mm-hmm. So stress in your childhood or trauma in your childhood. And yet, Tim, like when I looked back at my childhood, like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have called it traumatic, especially that- compared to Miguel. And is that like zero to five, basically? Well, actually the ACE studies, like the true ACE studies are looking at really the the span of your childhood. So even beyond five years, but you bring up a really good point that the, the events in our life that really form our biology really happen quite, quite young. And I would say that the majority of them are happening before age three. So it's, this is stuff that a lot of us like aren't even going to have conscious memory of. And that's where I realized, wait a second, like, I don't understand. I don't understand trauma. Even after all these years of working with Miguel, Mm -hmm. helping him, I still don't really understand trauma because I was still looking for this big event Mm -hmm. and I didn't see it in my childhood. And so I didn't understand why I would have the body of someone who had had a lot of stress and trauma in their childhood. So it was at that point that I realized I I need to reevaluate what trauma is. And that's what took me into this whole world of, oh my goodness, wait a second. Our body, our nervous system is constantly adapting to our life experiences. And then that's just it. When life experiences are overwhelming, it doesn't matter why. It doesn't matter what caused the overwhelm. There's only one trauma response in the body. And so you can simplify the trauma to, did your body have a response of overwhelm? And that's it. We don't need to 
ask any more questions. And so as I looked back then at my childhood through that lens, were there times when I felt alone? Were there times when I felt lost? Were there times when I felt overwhelmed? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And so I started to be able to have a, a different definition of trauma. And that's when I saw, wait a second, like this is this has become my biology. And what I needed to figure out, Tim, was how do I undo the damage, right? Because by now I'm 30 and I've, this is decades. My body has been living with this for decades and it's just now surfacing, but it's been underneath the surface the whole time. Is it even possible to undo the damage of decades of this experience of overwhelm in my body? And I didn't know at the time. And so that's when I started that journey and, and trying to find answers for myself. And that's what took me to all these different types of trauma trainings. I was going there for myself. Like I had no idea that this would eventually become right. my, my career and my business. I was just trying to find answers for myself and, and going everywhere in order to do that. And what I was trying to find was what are those things that will help me get my health back the fastest? Mm -hmm. So that I'm not spending my whole life in therapy. <laughs> that's right, right, that's right. not what I'm going for. Like, right. how can I, how can I accelerate my healing journey? I don't want to cut corners. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But I'm also wanting to be strategic about this, thoughtful about this, and actually do things in a way that will move things along as fast as my body yeah. will allow. Yeah, you want to be effective. Like, I want to be wanna, effective. You don't want to waste time. You want to like, okay, let's figure out how, you know, the, the quickest way from point A to point B. Yeah. The, yeah. The most efficient way from point A to point B, not cutting corners, but yeah. actually doing it in a way that will be changes that will last. I'm not doing the band-aids anymore. I'm not doing just the masking of symptoms. I, I did that right at some point I was on right. two antidepressants because that was how bad my anxiety and depression and burnout had gotten. And that was the solution that is still the first line of treatment. <laughs> so I had done that and was like, no, that's no, that's that's not that's not actually solving the problem. And so figuring out, like going on this journey and figuring out, like as an adult, how do I how do I do this for myself? And then after all that I learned, being able to see, oh my goodness, like there's so much that we can do to support our biology that helps our trauma healing journey. And that for me was just news. Like that was, that was my huge insight for my thirties right. because I had always like many other people seen trauma as just a psychology problem. And I just, the solution is to go to a therapist. The solution is to talk about it. The solution is to, you know, process what happened and to realize that actually not only, not only is that not the first solution, like that's actually not what we should start with. Mm -hmm. but there's, there's a limiting factor in how much we can even safely talk about and process what's happened to us in the past. And that limiting factor is our biology. So that trauma is much more of a biology, physiology, body experience and issue than it is just our psychology. And so that's where we've been able to find like, ah, we have all these tools that we can pull out and we can say, okay, given where you are right now, this tool for this piece of your biology will be what helps open things up for your trauma work. And, and that will change over time based on where our, our body and our biology are. But that's been, that's been my experience and why I can stand here today and be like, ah, no, trauma is so much more biology yeah. than just our psychology. Do you think that people need to be aware of their trauma before they can actually start working through it? Absolutely not. Yeah. My experience has been, and, and I'll tell you what I've, what I've tried and found out because what I'm, what I tried was people were coming in to see me for their health issues, right? They're coming in to see me for their fatigue or their autoimmunity or their substance use. And I'm realizing that I'm, I'm, I can see the trauma, right? Cause my right. eyes have been opened. I can see all this trauma right. that's driving. That's now contributing to these health issues, but how do I bring trauma work into addressing their health issues? So what I started to experiment with Tim is I'm just going to teach you some basic, what I call somatic exercises. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not even going to use the word trauma yet because so many people like me are like not open to that word. Like that's that they don't recognize that. And so it's, it just becomes something that's a barrier rather than feeling aligned. And so I'm not even going to use the word trauma. And I'm just going to say, you know what? Ah, there's so much emotions. There's other words that we can use, right? Like there's so much that our body holds. And as you are doing this stuff for your autoimmunity, for your fatigue, for your IBS, whatever it is, we're also going to start doing some very simple, basic somatic work because your body needs to feel safe. It's one right. of the elements with that's the thing. Like everybody just needs to feel safe. Like that's yes. it. And, and yeah. there's a difference between thinking that you feel safe and actually your body telling your brain, like, I'm safe. You can focus on other things. Mm -hmm. And we only get that sensation of safety in our body when we know what that actually feels like and can learn how to create that for ourselves. And so I started to, to take people through just a, a very basic uh, 21 days is what I call it. Just 21 mm -hmm. days. And I'm teaching you basic somatic skills. We're not even talking about trauma yet, Tim. We're not even using that word yet. We're just starting to I, I call it going on a journey into your nervous system and learning how to create these felt senses of safety, support, growth, expansion without going into something unmanageable and too big. And just with that process, they started to have changes in their biology. Mm. So what that told me was that, no, like you don't need to know the traumas in your life before we actually just start doing trauma work. Right. And this isn't even just related to trauma work. Like this is just knowing how to live with your body, how to be a human being. Like this is the manual for your body to keep it at a place where it's not storing trauma over your lifetime, but even being able to be at a place where you can just process things as you go through life rather than storing and, and accumulating. So no, thankfully you don't need to know your traumas and it's not best to even start by talking about them. We've got to actually get the body ready, resourced to be able to open up because opening up otherwise feels unsafe. Right, right. I did a trauma intensive with a woman named Tara Holbrook. Have you heard that name before? Yeah. She's very good. And I went through her program a few weeks ago and it was just really, I mean, kind of to your point, it's like we need to feel safe. And so the first day and a half was breath work yoga, very, very like gentle yoga, not like hardcore vinyasa flow. It's like very, it's like yin, you know, <laughs> we're doing, she, she called it trauma yoga. And we were like beating on drums and we were talking and we were doing imaging and visualization. And what I found was that memories from my childhood that I had not, that I just weren't even there, like all of a sudden were starting to come up. And she said, and I, I've never heard anybody, you know, you, you talk about doing the work, right? And she said, okay, we're, we're getting into the work. And I was like, oh, it was so, it was so cool. Cause I've never heard, you hear people talk about doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. But then this was really a way to really just very directly. Okay. We are getting into the work. This is it. We're no longer just talking about it, Tim. We're actually doing the work. Right, right, right. It was just, I mean, I'll have to tell you about my experience one of these days, but it was, it was amazing. Okay. So major trauma lives in the subconscious mind. Do you believe that? Well, how do you define the subconscious mind? Oh, okay. That's, I don't know if I have an answer for that. The subconscious mind are thoughts that are not conscious. I mean, so they're there. Right. And I heard this from a guy named, da I think David, David Drischke, I think was his name. And he owns a clinic in Mexico and he, it's an Ibogaine clinic. And he says, major trauma lives in the subconscious mind. And the only way to treat that major trauma is to get to the subconscious mind. Do you have an opinion on that? I've got opinions on everything, Tim. So okay, uh, good. <laughs> That's, that's why you're here. You're that's the why I'm here. That's why we're friends, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you, you have to understand that with my background, like I'm a physician, I did general surgery for three and a half years. So I am very anatomical. So when you talk about like a subconscious mind, I'm like, 
what exactly are you referring to? Like where in my anatomy book <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. So I like to break it down to help. Like just, I need to understand. I need to understand when you say that it's stored in this place, like where exactly are we talking about? So when people talk about the subconscious mind, what they're actually talking about is something called the autonomic nervous system. That is our unconscious. That is our subconscious. Mm -hmm. So there are different branches of our nervous system. And yes, this will be a brief anatomy lesson. <laughs> Thank you to anatomy. So we have our central nervous system, which is our brain. That's our central nervous system. And it includes our brain stem and the spinal cord. But then coming out of that are all of these nerves. And there's the, in the brain stem, like that would be an area where those nerves are coming out, especially the vagus nerve. I'm sure right. many people have heard the vagus nerve when yep. it comes to trauma, because the vagus nerve is what controls our autonomic functions unconsciously. Okay. So in a sense, when people talk about the unconscious mind, like that's actually what they're talking about. They're talking about these, this branch, this division of our nervous system. It's a real nerve mm -hmm. in our, in our body. It's not just this hypothetical, you know, cloud that goes around our, our brain. Like it's an actual nerve pathways and neural networks inside of us that operate on an unconscious level. So we call it the subconscious. Right. Okay. And that is where trauma gets stored. Right. So in essence, what happens is that there are three different operating systems for our body. Mm -hmm. You can think of it as the three different operating systems for a car. So if you're driving your car and you're just cruising down the road, your foot is on the gas, but you're not, you're not, you know, flooring it. It's you're cruising. Like that's, that's in one version of an operating system that in our body is called parasympathetic rest and digest, social engagement. There's many different words that people might associate with that operating system of our body. When our system is in that unconscious operating system, our heart beats at a certain pace, our lungs breathe at a certain pace, our digestion is working at a certain pace, but then we can switch to stress mode. And that would be where you realize that you're late for a meeting, Tim, and you floor it. I mean, your, your foot is all the way on the gas pedal. You're praying that there's no cop in the area because you are speeding. Right. That's our stress mode. And there is a stress mode in our body. Right. And that is operated on an unconscious level, mm -hmm. unconscious level that then it speeds our heart rate up. It speeds our breath rate up. It slows down our digestion. Like there's this, it's an operating system, but then there's the trauma operating system, Tim. Okay. The trauma operating system would be the equivalent of you throwing on that emergency brake in your car. Okay. And even though your foot may still be on the gas pedal, mm -hmm. you still may be shooting out adrenaline into your blood. Mm -hmm. Your emergency brake is more powerful than your gas pedal. Right. That's the trauma response. The trauma response is more powerful than the stress response. And it is a whole operating system of, of our body where just like the emergency brake, it just shuts everything down. Gotcha. It may not take the anxiety away because your foot may still be on the gas pedal, uh -huh. but your body has shut down. It's become overwhelmed. And so our breathing actually goes really slow, really shallow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been told this, but like my therapist would used to tell me like, Amy, take a breath, please. Can you please breathe? Right, 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 right. Well, you just forget to breathe because it's unconscious. Well, and I think most most people, if you walk around and you pay attention to it, most people walk around breathing with their shallow breaths. Tim, most people are walking around in a chronic trauma response. Right. This is the effect of stored trauma in their body. This has become their normal. Right. And this is how it manifests. This is this is how trauma becomes our biology is on an unconscious level. You don't even realize that you're breathing shallow, right? You don't even realize that your digestion is not working well. You don't even realize these things because it's on an unconscious level, but it's still driving your biology. And eventually it will like mine come out from underneath the surface and mm -hmm. present in symptoms, diseases, diagnoses, chronic conditions. But all of this is unconscious. And so that's why, yes, trauma is stored in the unconscious, but there's so much more to that <laughs> than just saying the unconscious mind. Okay. Why is trauma your biology and not your psychology? So when the vagus nerve 
and the vagus nerve is where this trauma response gets communicated. And it communicates it throughout the entire body so that it literally shifts your body into that trauma operating system. And so down to a cellular level, it is telling your cells to shut down. It's telling your cells, you know what? Don't expend any extra energy right now. We need to conserve our energy. And so everything starts to feel hard. Everything starts to not work well because now your immune system is like, oh yeah, that virus, I don't have the energy to fight that. That bacteria, I don't have the energy to fight that. Or maybe your hormones. So we have all of these hormones that keep us working well, thyroid and cortisol and melatonin, like all of these hormones. And all of a sudden, when that trauma operating system becomes our biology, our hormones are like, yeah, no, I'm just not going to do this this day. And so then we start having low grade thyroid problems. We have sleep problems because our melatonin is off and we feel so tired in the day and our cortisol sometimes can still be high because we're still having maybe that foot on the gas pedal. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's been so long, Tim, that our cortisol is bottomed out and we're walking around with low cortisol. That is always, always, always a chronic condition of living in a trauma response. So this trauma response becomes our biology and literally drives every aspect of our body down to the cellular level, all the way up to the organ and the system level. Wow. There's a guy. Like you can't just go to the therapist and talk about that. No, no. Right? And there, do you know, have you heard of a guy named Wes Cress? I'm not sure that I have. So he's in, he's, he's in old town. I'll have to bring you to see Wes. He's brilliant. And he's, it, and he he's he's into this. I mean, when I have a conversation with him, I can retain like you know seven percent of what he of what he even talks about. And he has a master's in Oriental medicine, and so he's like he geeks out on this stuff. So you guys would have a, a great conversation because he talks about the vagus nerve and the trauma response and IBS and the reason why all of these things are happening. And he has me on this thyroid protocol right now, and I think he has me taking the TTFD. You know what that is? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then bifidobacterium. And he has me on a, a, a bunch of these natural supplements. And it's like, I feel great. And it's a process, but it's, it, so it's, it's, it's good. I'll have to, I'll have to connect you guys or more appropriately. If you, if you show up, I'll bring you to one of my sessions with them. There you go. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. now I'm definitely going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's great. I, I work out with him with this thing called the newbie and it's, it's, it's great, but it's, it's kind of like a, a workout and a therapy session and it, it's all like bundled in. It's, it's amazing. That's perfect. I, love, I see him once a week. It's great. So, I mean, Tim, this is one of the things that I admire about you is that you have not just stayed in the traditional recovery model mm -hmm. of it. It's only about meetings, even though recovery and meetings are important, but right. you've been one who you've leaned into how can I make my biology, how can I make my physiology be at its best? And I'm curious for you, like what have been the results for you and how you've seen your, your mental health improve, your even ability to do all this trauma work right. because you're doing your cold plunges. You're doing your, I mean, you're, you're, you're doing the biology piece. Right. How has that been for you? I, I feel amazing. And I would say that all it's it, recovery is not just stopping drinking and stopping drugs. Like that's just one very basic piece. And, and people that get there don't stay. So like, that's, that's just the first, that's the first of it. It's mental, emotional, spiritual, physical It's all of it. It's all of the things and all the things from breath work, prayer, meditation, a gratitude list, surrounding myself with positive people, cold plunging, infrared sauna, compression boots, going to see Wes, going to this trauma intensive, like all of these things, yoga, like all of the things I do, it's like, that's why I am who I am today. And that's why I feel like, I feel great. I feel great. And, and it's not, it's, it's because of all the things. And people ask me like, oh, do you think red light therapy works? It's like, I don't know, maybe, I think so. There's <laughs> lots of evidence that supports it. I mean, I do a lot of other things. I can tell you that much. Right. Right. And the more tools that you bring in, just the more resourced your body is. I mean, I see trauma work just as much as I see a physical workout or my physical performance. 
Right. When I show up for trauma work, like it is a stress. Mm -hmm. And based on how much I've done beforehand to resource my body so that it has all the nutrients for the mitochondria and it has all, all of the oxygen and all of the magnesium and everything that it needs, then I can actually perform a lot better. And whether that's on my bike or mm -hmm. Doing trauma work. It's 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 really all the same for the body because it is this stretch, it is this growth, it is a stress. And we've got to resource our body in order for it to be able to experience it as a growth rather than as one more thing that it's just not ready for and we're having to push ourselves through. Right. But it's not sustainable. Were you were you ever connected with Dr. Don Wood? No. So he has the inspired performance program, the tip program. And he's a member of Genius Network. I connected with him through through Joe Polish as well. And his, like I went through his program and really it's, it's, it's the way his program works is you kind of unravel your traumas, right? From right. whatever. And you don't need, and, and he says, you only need to figure out like one trauma. And then once you figure out this one trauma, you start to unwind the other traumas. And the result is that your physical performance is better. Yeah. Oh, okay. totally. Totally. And, 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 and it was interesting because I went through his program and then I was like, OK, you know, whatever. And then the following week, I went on this bike ride and there's a ride I go on Tuesday. And Thursday. It's, it's called Hour Power. It's really hard. And there's lots of different sections. And there's one section through the golf course. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but basically I go through this. And, and before this ride, I was like not feeling 100 percent. I was like, I'm just going to kind of relax. I'm just going to kind of cruise. And somehow I end up pulling through the golf course. <laughs> and, and everybody, it was so fast. And then I went home and I looked at my Strava and I looked at my results and I, I had a PR through the golf course, a personal record through the golf course. And I had 187 efforts on that same stretch. It's like, wow. Okay. I guess this, I guess this thing really works. Very much so. So one of, one of the things about stored trauma in the body is it actually, it, 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 it almost like it's holding energy. Right. And, and that's why so many people start to experience fatigue, the more trauma gets right. stored in their body. And it's true that while we do need to pace the body, right. And that's, and that's really important because if we don't pace it, we get more tired, but at, if we do it in the, in the right way, in the right order, resourcing our bodies, it opens up these pockets and it's like, boom, there's a little more energy. Right. And so, this didn't even feel hard. Right. Like if I would have had to perform at that, you know, PR, I would have had to do, you know, I would have felt it. Right. And, and that's what people start to experience as they go through the 21 day journey with me is, is it's just like, it feels effortless that mm. the, the emotional eating just starts to fall away. And I've been battling that for years. And now it's just like, it just fell away. Like where, where did it go? Right. It's like, yeah, this is the power of doing this kind of work is, ah, uh, like it frees, it frees the body up and it, it, it just opens us up to more, more, more energy, more aliveness, more presence. Yeah. More life, living life, life, life like, <laughs> to be alive and fulfillment. That's what we all, that's what we're all after. Yeah. What, why is, I say, what is the role of physical trauma in emotional trauma? Oh, yeah. And I get this question a lot because for many people, it there is that combination, right? Like they, they've they had some physical trauma and then I think everyone has had emotional trauma in their life. <laughs> but what we see is a lot of brain inflammation in working with emotional trauma. And for anyone who's had any kind of a head injury, even down to just whiplash all the way up to a concussion and, and losing consciousness, those kinds of physical traumas actually set our brain up to experience more brain inflammation with smaller stress later on. So that even a small emotional stress, relationship stress, and it will actually re-trigger the inflammation that a prior physical trauma had caused our brain. Mm -hmm. And then a person will experience yeah. brain fog and decision fatigue. And it's like the, the easiest decisions about what should I eat for dinner? What am I wearing today? <laughs> right? Like the easy decisions all of a sudden seem really hard and their, their memory can 
can falter, but just their ability to focus and get their work done really goes down when they have this flare up of brain inflammation. Mm -hmm. And so prior physical traumas to the brain set the brain up to experience, re-experience inflammation with subsequent emotional stress. And that's when a person actually, what I say, kind of is predisposed to a trauma response because anytime that we have that brain inflammation, our nervous system, our autonomic nervous system is going to go into that trauma operating system that I talked about. It's, it's just swimming in a bath of inflammation. It's, it's, it's overwhelmed and it will, that will be a reason to shut it down. And so it's when we've had prior physical head injuries, and I'd be curious to see how many you you've had, I've had a number on my bike. (laughs) I was was in a, I have a traumatic, I had a traumatic brain injury in two, in 1996. So major car accident. Major yeah. car accident. I was in ICU for four days, 24 hour care for 28 days, transitional living center for brain injured adult, adults for six weeks, disability classes for six weeks. This was when in 1996, I was 19 years old. It, yeah, it was like, I, it took me like two years to recover. I mean, it before yeah. I was fully like back. I mean, people said it wasn't the same Tim. Right. Yeah. Yikes. I mean, I've, I've had a, a car accident and a head injury with that, but nothing like that. And then I have, I've had a, a number of bike accidents where I have, have hit my head and lost consciousness was one of them, but right. not, nothing like that. But anytime that we've had that kind of a head injury or even just less severe, then we need to be on specific support for maintaining our brain and our brain neurons in a resting state so that they don't get reactivated to inflammation any time for any reason, even with emotional stress that that gets reactivated into inflammation, it's going to take our body back into that trauma response and trauma physiology all over again. So that is one of the intentional pieces about supporting our biology that we need to be aware of. Wow. How does trauma relate to addiction? (laughs) Tim, you could answer this one for me. (laughs) So here, my, my experience has been the, there is a driving force for all addictions. An addiction does not just appear out of nowhere. There is always, there's always something that drives that addiction. And the word that I will use for what drives all addictions is a term that's called dysregulation. And dysregulation just refers to there just being this unsettled feeling inside of us. And it's, it's our autonomic nervous system and it just not being able to feel comfortable, feel safe, feel okay. That's all of that kind of is just this dysregulation. And so all addictions, all addictions are initially an attempt to make that feeling go away. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to feel comfortable. Like I'm not necessarily always even trying to feel great. I'm just trying to not feel unsafe. I'm trying to not feel this insecure. I'm trying to not feel this inner restlessness that I don't seem to find any other solution for. So there's always a driving, always, always something that's driving an addiction process. And Thus, once we identify that we're ready to come out of that, like you say, the first step is stopping the substance, but until we address what's driving it and what drove us there in the first place, it's not going away (laughs) and it will either come back as that same addiction or it will pop up as a different addiction, Mm -hmm. but the body, the brain will always, always, always find solutions for feeling better always. And so until we take that dysregulation and have a healthy solution for that and have that not be present, we will always having to be fighting, fighting, fighting that, that drive, that sensation that we use the addiction for. So that, that dysregulation is the, is the trauma response. And so no matter whether it was an emotional thing that caused that dysregulation and thus the addiction, or we now know that there are many biology factors that we can be born with 
that actually already start to overwhelm our system and put it into experiences of trauma. So it doesn't have to be something emotional. And for me, I've identified a number of biology factors that I was born with that set the stage for me experiencing overwhelm in my childhood so that I'm not just only blaming my environment or family or whatever it is, but no, like there's so much of our biology that actually creates experiences of overwhelm for us. And until we address those, we'll still feel like we are fighting our own biology to not engage in our addiction or substance use. Does that make sense? It does. And what I think about when I hear you talk about, you know, people get sober, right? And in the rooms of AA, and this is, I I love AA and that's like my foundation. And that's where I like that, that was what worked for me. However, what I do know, and, and I see it in the, in the, in the 12 step rooms, people get sober, but then their addictions move that, you know, food, sex, gambling, like all these other behaviors. And I call them alcoholic behaviors. It's not drinking. It might not be drinking. It might not be drugs, but it's other things because they're seeking the solution. And I believe in my experience, I had to go out and do the other, do the other work in order to really feel good because it's an addiction solution. It's really not an addiction problem. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, my foundation was Al-Anon. And so I am forever grateful like that. That was the beginning of like a big change in my life. So I, and I still come back to the principles and many of what is, is taught in, in the 12 steps. And then there is this aspect of, of even, even for me where, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't directly dealing with a substance, but I was dealing with a lot of other emotional stuff. It's, you can either hard knuckle it through and try to use motivation and mindset. But until we address the, the underlying driving force, it, it won't just be, I mean, the alcohol is not the problem. The alcohol is the solution, right? And right, so you right. take away, you take away that solution and your, your brain, your body is going to find and, and desperately need a, a different solution. And it will feel like a survival thing which is where so many people, they, they commit to, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never, never, never going to do this again. Right. And right. then they find themselves doing it again. Yeah. And it's like, no, this, this isn't a lack of willpower. This is what I was talking about where your emergency break, your trauma response, your survival response is stronger than anything else in your body. It's stronger than the stress response. It's stronger than your mindset and your motivation. So you can commit as many times as you want, but until your survival unconscious mind, how's that? I'll throw that word in there for you. That that survival unconscious mind tells you that, you know, we're actually good. We're okay. We feel okay. We're, we're, we're safe. Right. Then, then that won't, won't change anything about the, the, the downstream behavior that you're talking about. What's the difference between stress and trauma? Yeah. So I liken the difference between, I mean, I keep going back to, to cars and you know, the stress response is having my foot on that gas pedal and I, and I'm racing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm stressed. I'm racing. I, I may be weaving in and out of traffic because I'm trying to get somewhere fast. Like it's a high energy oh my goodness, like, am I going to make this? But let me give it my best try. Whereas that trauma response is, I'm not even going to try. Mm. This feels too big for me. I feel too small. I feel too lost. I feel too stupid. I feel not worthy enough. Like this, this is just, it's too much. And I'm not even going to try because I don't even know where to start. Right. How do you recognize unresolved stored trauma? Ooh, that's a great question. So for me, there are three easy ways to recognize stored trauma. And this might be helpful for people because it's not always obvious, right? And and as you've known that sometimes memories don't even come up until you're doing doing other stuff. And so we we can't rely just on our conscious memories to know if we've had overwhelming experiences that we would categorize as trauma. So we can recognize trauma through three different ways. One way would be our thoughts. 
And anytime we have thoughts of, oh, this is too much. I can't do this. That right there is a trauma thought. Okay. If you're saying, oh, this is a lot. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work out, but you're still trying. That's a stress thought. But the trauma okay. thought is, I, I can't do this. I just can't do this anymore. Ah, uh, okay. Then we can look at body sensations. So the stress response is high energy. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to try to get there. I'm going to try to do this. And then that trauma response is just a sense of heaviness in the body where I'm sitting on the couch and the remote control is two feet away. And I'm like, oh, it feels so hard. It feels so hard to reach two feet to reach the remote control. Like it feels so hard to walk to the kitchen to get a glass of water. Like our body just feels heavy. It feels slow. We, we feel like we're having to push ourselves through. That's how our body feels. So we can recognize it by our body sensations. The last thing would be by our physical health. And certainly anyone, anyone with a substance use, an active substance use is experiencing that trauma response in their body. Either that is their reason for using their substance or the substance causes that kind of a shutdown and response in their body. And we can look at other health issues. So autoimmunity, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, IBS. These are all health conditions that are very strongly associated with the trauma response. And so if a person has those, or if they are finding themselves on that path towards those chronic conditions, that would be a sign that, oh, like there's actually been years building up now of stored trauma in my body. And this is how it's manifesting. What I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about fight, flight, or freeze, which I, we don't have time to really get into that conversation in this interview, but that's kind of what I'm thinking about. When I, when I hear you talk about the trauma response, I'm thinking. It's freeze. That, it's freeze, right? Yeah. Is that always, so is there, is there a difference? So no. a stress <laughs> response is fight, flight, yes. and, and, and a trauma response is freeze. Yes. That's a very, very accurate and simple way to look at it. Okay. I've if never... you go into freeze, that's oh. a trauma response. That is no longer a stress. Wow. Okay. Is there a fine line? Yes. And this is the line that I love for people to be able to find in their own body of how much stress can you hold before you just cross that line into overwhelm and freeze? Okay. And what are those things that will make your system go into that Oh, that freeze moment. Usually it's relational stuff, but sometimes it's also physical stuff. I mean, I've seen people try to do a detox program too fast or do, you know, like I'm going to do celery juicing for 14 days. Right. And like, those are kinds of things that I've seen their body just like go into this, like freeze overwhelm response. Like I, I'm not getting what I need, but for most times it's a relational stress, conflict, confrontation, or some aspect of relationship with someone else that it puts our system into that freeze response. And that's actually how we know that we've, we've had some attachment and early life trauma because that's the pattern that's wired into our system. It's, it's so fascinating, Tim. Like it's, it's just so fascinating to see our body in, in action and how it actually navigates life on this unconscious level, right? Cause that that's all been unconscious for us. Well, um, we have, what, we have 60,000 thoughts a day and like what, 92% of them are, are unconscious or subconscious, yeah, right? Yeah, so right. <laughs> we're walking through life and like our body is just making the decisions without us even knowing. And I want to help people move to being able to have those unconscious decisions be ones that are serving them and helping them move forward towards health, not be ones that are taking them further into trauma response. But for most people their unconscious thoughts take them further into trauma. Right. It, well, it's the people that it's the environment they're in. It's the people they surround themselves it with. It's yes. the stories they're telling themselves. Yes. It's the stories they're that. telling their subconscious. It's all of those things. All of those things. All and their things. biology, Tim. Yes. And their, of course, and their biology. Okay. <laughs> Is there a question that you wanted me to ask you today? Not necessarily. I'd love to just let people know about my upcoming biology of trauma summit. 
please. And that's, I've, I've interviewed, oh my goodness, like almost 50 people, including our good friend, Joe Polish, but Gaber Mate, Peter Levine, Stephen Porges, a lot of the, the trauma experts, mm-hmm. Richard Schwartz, speaking of parts, right? Like in the stories that we tell ourselves, right. that was a fascinating interview on parts and how it relates with chronic health conditions. So the whole topic of the, of the summit, which is seven days, August one through seven, the whole topic is around this trauma disease connection. And how does trauma actually become our disease? And what are the tools that we have to address the biology piece so that we can undo a lot of that? So there's experts both from the medical side, functional medicine, attachment, trauma, all all of it, and it's free. And so I invite people to join me for that Biology of Trauma Summit 3.0, starting August 1. Biology of Trauma Summit. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's August 1 through 7? Yes. Awesome. Okay. That does it for my time with Dr. Amy. Dr. Amy, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really enjoyed our conversation. And thank you for watching. I love being sober. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.